My goal today is simply to work through two acceleration problems, just giving examples of how the problems can be solved when you're looking at the different variables. So let's just get right into it. A car is traveling at a speed of 30 meters per second, encounters an emergency, and comes to a complete stop. How much time will it take for the car to stop if its rate of deceleration is negative 4 meters per second squared? So the first thing I like to do in any problem is really just state the givens. You know, and in this case, let's look at our givens here. What do we got? Um, we have a given up here of 30 meters per second, and that a car is traveling at the speed of 30 meters per second. So I'm right here going to list VI, or initial velocity, as 30 meters per second. And right now, we're going to note that that's a positive value. So I'm going to assume that's right word movement here. And an encounter is an emergency and comes to a complete stop. So when you come to a complete stop, we know that the final velocity is zero. And we're going to write down the units, meters per second, just to be consistent. The question is really asking us, how much time will it take for the car to stop? So the time is something seconds. And it's going to also give us some more information that the problem is uh, stating that we have an acceleration or a deceleration of negative 4 meters per second squared. Now, all the givens are listed, and what I think a good idea then is to list out our, our equation here. The acceleration equation is uh, acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. And when I do this, let's, uh, let's just write this up here. I'm going to rewrite it. In this case, instead of acceleration, write negative 4 meters per second squared equals the final velocity. The final velocity we noted was 0. 0 meters per second minus the initial velocity of 30 meters per second divided by the amount of time that this takes. The amount of time is going to be referenced simply as a t because it's an unknown. And a little algebra here We'll just uh, rearrange this, and we're going to isolate t. So if I want to solve for time, I simply have to isolate it. And I'm just going to do what I did here and rearrange the formula. So it's going to be time equals 0, excuse me for that, 0, 0 minus 30 meters per second. My pen's getting a little crazy. Divided by negative 4.0 meters per second. And when I crunch the numbers out here, let's figure out here, time equals negative 30 meters per second divided by negative 4 meters per second. And that's going to tell me how much time this has taken place here. Why don't you just press pause and make sure you can use your calculator, okay, and solve this problem. And what my calculator is giving me is that the amount of time this is going to take is going to be around 7.5 seconds. You know, and if we go back to the original problem, the question really says, how much time will it take for the car to stop? Once again, all I did here, step one, list the givens. Step two, write down my formula. You know, step three, plug the numbers into the formula. Step four, use some algebra to rearrange the formula. And lastly, step five, crunch the numbers. Let's try another problem here. The last thing I want to do on here is uh, just look at this number over here, 7.5 seconds. And I think the, the last thing I try and encourage a lot of students to do in, in step number six is, does your answer make sense? Okay, that's one of the things. All right, we had a, uh, a car traveling with positive velocity. It had negative acceleration right here. Whenever you have a positive or a negative, that means they're kind of fighting each other and your object is slowing down. Positive velocity and negative acceleration, the object is clearly slowing down in this case because they're oppositely uh, going in different uh, directions. So if, that, if that's the case, then I am going from 30 meters a second, slowing down, and I am coming to a complete stop. All right, so yeah, that does make sense that I have 7.5 seconds to stop if I did begin at 30 meters per second. So just lastly, you always want to double check, does your number make sense? Okay, let's go on to the next problem here. In this problem, we see that a cart is rolling down an incline for five seconds. So right off the bat, I'm giving you a time of, you know, five seconds. 
And I'm also saying that it has an acceleration of 4 meters per second squared. Now, just recall, unit for acceleration is meters per second squared, and I see that right here. If the car has a beginning velocity of 2 meters per second, the question really is asking us what is the final speed or what is the VF. You know, the first thing we're going to do is just list the givens. A car is rolling down an incline for 5 seconds. I see T equals, you know, 5.0 seconds. I see the next thing listed here, it has an acceleration. And the acceleration does have a positive, you know, acceleration. So we do have a plus 4.0 meters per second squared. All right, that's cool. We also note that it has a beginning or an initial velocity of 2.0 meters per second. That is a 2.0. And it's asking us in this case, what is the VF or what is the final velocity? And we don't know right now. My pen is kind of wigging out to me a little bit, but that's going to be in meters per second. So although it's not terribly clear right down here, because my pen was having a little bit of a spasm going on right here, that is final velocity. Uh, the next thing I'm going to do is just list, uh, list the formula. And in this case, it's the standard acceleration formula. Acceleration equals the final velocity minus the initial velocity divided by time. And in the space I have down here, I should be able to put this down here. But, you know, why don't we just put it up on this side over here? All right. Let's put it up here. I have the acceleration. The acceleration was given at 4.0, let's write the units down, meters per second squared, equals the final velocity, kind of which we don't know, so it's listed as VF, minus the initial velocity, which was given at 2 meters per second, divided by the time. In this case, the time was given to us as 5.0 seconds. And I think it's important in this case to start distributing you know, and solving for VF, or in this way, isolating the final velocity. And let's begin doing that. So I'm going to have, you know, 4 times 5, and I'm going to distribute the 5 over here. So it's going to be 4.0 meters per second multiplied against the time, which is 5.0 seconds, is going to equal my final velocity minus my initial velocity. Okay, I mean, let's just crunch the numbers now. It's going to be a... Uh, in this case over here, 20. I'm going to have a little uh, pen doing this thing over here. Um, 20 meters is going to be equal to the final velocity minus 2.0 meters per second. For some reason, right in this zone of my screen, my pen is doing this, this funny thing. All right, now we need to solve for the, you know, the final velocity, and we need to isolate out this uh, value still. And so and that is a final velocity there. It's going to look crazy. And we're going to add 2 to each side here. And when I do that, I'm going to have 20 plus 2 equals my, my VF. And I do apologize actually here, but this is supposed to be meters per second um, because this is supposed to be meters per second squared. And before, when I prematurely canceled out, it really only cancels out one of them. So I did, did just notice that here because it's supposed to be 20 meters per second plus 2 meters per second, which should give me 22 meters per second as my final velocity. Okay, so if we check this out, you know, going through each step, one of the givens, two, writing the formula out, three, labeling the parts of the formula, and we're seeing that we have to solve for the final velocity here, and we need to isolate it. Going through the isolation process to try and continue to isolate and try and get a vinyl, final velocity by itself, using your algebra, and finally getting down here where it's 20 plus 2 meters per second equals the final velocity. And I do apologize once again for our, our unit conversion here. I knew there was something wrong. I didn't catch it until a little bit later, though. Um, the final velocity is 22 meters per second, and I always want to come back to this point. You know, does your answer make sense? You know, um, we have, we have a, a positive velocity initially. That's a plus 2. All right, plus means rightward or downward. I have an acceleration of plus as well. Anytime the acceleration and the velocity have the same uh, direction, you know, the same vector direction, we're looking at something speeding up. So this should be getting faster. And in this case, it is faster than 2 meters per second. The answer is 22 meters per second. You're also going to know that 
and the final velocity is positive as well. So I'm pretty confident in our answer, the final velocity being 22 meters per second. All right, guys, that kind of wraps up our two examples on how to use the acceleration formula in our one-dimensional kinematics. Thanks a lot for tuning in. All right, hope it was helpful. Have a good day.